What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I just wanted to hit you up with this quick hit here, man. I was on eBay. I just like watching stuff. No intention of buying it per limited funds always. But I stumbled on this. This is a 2002 Ford Chip Fu Speedbird. I probably wouldn't put the words in this order. I put probably like a Chip Fu Ford Speedbird Thunderbird. Um, I don't know if you remember, but back in the early 2000s, I watched a show called Rides, and I believe this was an episode of that, where Chip Foose was hired by automakers, really, to customize cars. I don't actually remember if the automakers were doing it. In fact, there are some Chip Foose Cadillacs, like an XLR and an SRT, and I don't know that it was authorized by Cadillac so much as it was by a particular dealer. Now, I also don't know if this Ford Thunderbird was sanctioned at all with Ford or dealer or anything like that. I think maybe he just wanted to do something like this. And in fact, on the show Overhauling, there was someone with an actual, I think it was a 60s Thunderbird, maybe 64 Thunderbird, and he customized that in the same way that he customized this Thunderbird. Now, Ford Thunderbird, as you remember, I think it was from 2002 to 2005, it was a retro style or heritage style car. It was supposed to harken back to the 55 to 57 Thunderbirds. Eh, they did a mediocre job of it at the time, in, in my opinion. But what the episode was, was his take, him taking that Ford Thunderbird and turning it into a roadster basically this car does not have a top at all this is actually probably the only look that's good on it uh, you know the retro style thunderbird was better without a top than it was with a top the top didn't look terrible but it was one of those cars where with the top up it looks a little funny it's um or it just doesn't look as good as it does with the top down. Look how sleek this car is. Now, my issue with this is that I don't know how many of these he made. I think it might actually tell us in the listing, but you can obviously see the Ford Thunderbird, but he changed these headlights for the better, in my opinion. Obviously, those are some Foos wheels. The whole bottom lower uh, rocker panel and front fascia and rear fascia here are really dropped down, so he must have extended those rockers down and dropped it to give it more of a road hugging look. You know, it, 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 there's a line here that kind of breaks it up and makes it look like a, a dropped rocker panel, but still looks good. And then he's got it in that kind of bronzish gray green chip foos metallic that he uses on a lot of his cars. You know, I don't know that it's exactly the same as on the Grandmaster, but it's very similar. And obviously he's cleaned up the grill, got rid of that honeycomb look or that uh, crossbar look and gone with kind of more of that billet style. You know, that was kind of in for a while, some fog lights on there. And like I said, these headlights even look just cleaner than those those headlights that they use. It'd be interesting here with the the chopped glass, and you can see how the window here is a little frameless, how well that handles with windows up at speed. I don't think it's great. You know, another thing is I kind of remember them putting in these hood vents and then also having these little vents on the trunk in the original design. And then he was like, uh, in the episode, I think he's like, why would there ever be vents on a, or on a trunk? It just wouldn't make sense. So those were in the original sketch and then got dropped there. It also looks like he has some really slight rollover bars. I can't remember if the 55 or 56 T-Birds had little like, uh, I don't know, roll hoops behind the seats there. They're purely decoration because they're certainly not tall enough to provide any real protection. Also, the back end is dressed up here just a little bit. Just a cleaner look. I mean, I, I, I really like this. I think it's actually a good looking car. I, I was kind of lukewarm to the Thunderbird. I liked them, but I didn't love them. You know, to me, the 55, 56 Thunderbirds, you know, I don't have any nostalgia for them. So to design something that looks like them doesn't really, you know, get me all warm inside. And I thought the car looked a little too laid back and a little bit like, I don't know, didn't didn't look a little racy enough for me. And too many round, soft edges. Too much of an almond shape. But it wasn't bad. It didn't irk me like some of the cars that came out that were also trying to be heritage styled and that I just didn't like, like the PT Cruiser and some of those. But as you can see, it's a pretty interesting car. And what makes it interesting to me is that Foos cars are not that common. You know, even the production cars like this, you know, not a fully coach-built car, just don't come up for sale that often. You know, I feel like the people that get them want to hold on to them. It also looks like the seats here are more like racing style seats. He did kind of keep that 
lateral quilted look that the Thunderbird had, especially in the Neiman Marcus edition. I remember that these seats had um, almost the exact same design, except that I think they were just lifted right out of the Lincoln. Um, this was basically a Lincoln LS under the skin. This here, too, also looks like there might be some sort of aluminum uh, cut out here or kind of an aluminum insert on the center console. I certainly don't think that was vintage. And this is kind of interesting. He put a dash-mounted windshield or a dash-mounted rear-view mirror as opposed to a windshield-mounted rear-view mirror. And that's probably because of what they did here with the windshield. I don't know that you'd want it up there. That may be something you can tell me if you remember on those older T-Birds was the the rear view mirror mounted there. I don't I don't recall particularly, but I think it's a good looking car. Really the only thing they did here, aside from, you know, uh, this kind of aluminum trim on the LS dashboard to change it is to kind of go to these retro style gauges. So that was a, that was a good, that was a good move. I definitely think they could have done a little bit better actually using a more lateral or horizontal dashboard from say either I think it was like the mercury cougar or even the crown victoria you know probably some fitment issues there but what i recall from those old school cars is that there's just a real lateral dashboard to them and so you know you kind of have in your mind that everything is a tray that goes straight across this has too much of that center waterfall i get that they maybe had the right platform and the size you know in the lincoln ls parts bin but they did a good job from the a pillar back but the dashboard really Kind of let it down on the retro look, you know, especially in the back here, this little cargo area here where they've quilted it. That really, to me, looks very custom car, you know, because when you get a custom car upholstered, a lot of times they'll just use like some plywood and then they will foam it and then sew the leather on top of it. That's actually what that kind of looks like. And it's obviously just a parcel shelf. There's no seats, which I like. Just embrace the fact that it's a two seater. Don't make it a two plus two. You can obviously see the custom gauges here. Man, they put a lot of a lot of pictures on this listing 30,000 and a half miles the other thing I've noticed here is he got rid of that like teal and put a little orange you know he when he uses that gray color on the cars he likes uh using like an orange pinstriping what's interesting to me is like I said to have something by Chip Foose who obviously is a little bit of a living legend have the Speedbird which was kind of made famous on that show have something that looks really cool it's probably going to be pretty reliable because it's just a production car for the most part and you know it has something that no one else is going to have i don't i've never seen a speed bird in person here and i don't expect to and so i think you could own this and drive it around your neighborhood even your big city probably never come across anyone again without our actual top on it it's probably going to be a you know um a weather forecast kind of car you're going to want to make sure that there's no clouds in the picture at all for the next 24 hours but at thirty-five thousand dollars, you know it's to me it's a little bit like Man, you could spend $100,000 on a car and see it all over the place. You could get Porsche 911 and see those up and down the streets of Chicago or L.A. or wherever, right? But for $35,000, and again, that might be below the reserve, you know, um, that's, that's an enticing, unique car. Now, at $50,000, which, you know, the reserve is probably going to be pretty close to that. I wouldn't be surprised if the reserve is maybe forty five, forty six thousand dollars $46,000. You know, it's again, it's probably a little bit like, well, you've got a... $18,000 Thunderbird under there, but you've got all these customizations, so I get it, but for $50,000, you know, what else are you going to get? A Honda Odyssey or the new Chrysler Pacifica? You know, this could be a really awesome, you know, weekender car for someone that would be really unique, something that's obviously kind of timeless. You know, I like the shape and, you know, whether you keep this another 10, 15, 20 years, I, I don't think it's something that won't be striking at some level. So, pretty cool, man. I wish I could have this. If anyone wants to... Go fund me this or crowdsource it for me. That would be awesome. Or if someone does buy this and is willing to let me check it out, let me know, man. Um, I would definitely love to check out a Foos car in real life. Reach out to me. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. If any of you are on eBay and looking for something special, this could be it. Peter Von Panda, out. <laughs>